please welcome Miriam.
What a concept, what a concept. And it's interesting, uh, we all suffered in the last two years, right? It has been very painful for the planet, for all of us. And I remember once my dad said, you don't seem too depressed. <laughs> And um, he attributed it to my students. Mm. And uh, there's a saying in French, there's no better way to stay young than to teach. Mm. I highly recommend it. <laughs> because you, you get to rethink, if you, in my opinion, whatever I consider correct teaching is, you don't know, first of all, you don't know anything. You're rethinking everything all the time. And it's a chance to rediscover with your young students um, the masterpieces of the repertoire. And so there is no student and teacher, but there are two people studying or two artists uh, contributing together. And when I met my wife, I remember writing that I help young people to find their voice. And uh, it struck me when I was writing it that generally when your mom calls or your girlfriend, you don't confuse the two. You know yeah. the voice. We're born with our voice. And the studies on babies have been wondering, do we teach them how to walk or do they know how to walk? It turns out they're programmed to do it. We, we like to think we help them. <laughs> and we did. But musicianship is something we are born with. Every human being in the womb of the mom knew exactly the mood of the mom. So music is our language. It's our first language, not English or Korean. And uh, we all speak it. So it's uh, what I found admirable is that I know all these pieces, but I rediscovered them. And I think it was stunning to hear two campanellas that are completely different, different. Yeah. because they are two different people. Yeah. And thank God we don't recognize a studio, but individuals. So. I want to pay homage and honor to all these young talents and most importantly to the parents that make this possible because without your emotional intelligence in this day and age where mostly grades and SATs and how much money you make and if you got a Tesla or not, music is kind of secondary. <laughs> so I honor you because my Grandma in Tangier, that's in Africa, northern Africa. They heard Oistrak, they heard Richter, they he heard Yves Montand, and they knew art. And I think that for these young people, emotional life, even if you want to think about Google, the way they hire is IQ. And the fact that you play the cello, that you have a sport, whether it's tennis, basketball, you know how to play in a team, that you try like an artist. Artistry has nothing to do with piano. It has to do with the way of life. But it's enhanced. In French, when you go to alpinist, when you go to top of Kilimanjaro, we call it la conquête de l'inutile, useless <laughs> conquest. Art, you can make, a, it always struck me when you see a poor homeless the one thing they all have in common, they all have a boombox. They all have music. I think it's vital. And it's not about whether you'll pay your rent with concerts or not. It's about it enriches your soul. And uh, I really commend all the parents here that make this amazing trip to get to know yourself. So I say this last, I'm not so sure that we discover music together, but we discover ourselves in music. And so I think this is an amazing um, tra trajectory and path that you allow them to take. And I, I would like to commend you on that as you make uh, life possible <coughs> and also so enjoyable. So thank you to all the parents.